The Mini 3 Pro and the Mini 2 are the two models of DJI line offering 4K video with a weight below the critical threshold of 250 grams. They are very different and they are positioned for two different kind of users. DJI has added the word Pro to the Mini 3 for a reason. The Mini 2 was released in November 2020 as an upgrade of the original Mini, adding 4K video, RAW photos, zoom functionality, better transmission and some basic quick shots. But the design and the technology were based on the first Mini, which was released in October 2019, almost three years ago, which is a geological era in terms of drone technology. At the time, it was a great achievement to squeeze a decent 4K camera with a 3-axis gimbal and performance up to DJI standard in such a small way. So the Mini 2 had to do without any bells and whistles. DJI has still on the catalog the Mini SE, a cheaper version of the Mini 2 that only offers 2.7K resolution, doesn't support RAW files for photos, with an old-fashioned pretty flimsy controller, lower speed and wind resistance, and a more basic transmission system. In my opinion, it is only suitable for users who are on a very strict budget, who want to try drone videography for the first time. Between the two, I would recommend going with the Mini 2 all the time. It is certainly worth the price difference. You will find info and prices for all the different models analyzed in this video in the description below. The Mini 3 Pro was released in May 2022. Thanks to the advance in technology and internal research, DJI has been able to add an astonishing amount of functionalities, almost the same as in the R2S, while still maintaining the weight below 250 grams. The new model offers three-dimensional obstacle sensors at the front, back and bottom. The ability to detect obstacles is a huge element of safety. It is very effective to avoid collisions and crashes, even though the Mini 3 lacks sensors on the sides and above. Therefore, I don't suggest using it for close-range tracking. Another huge feature of the Mini 3 compared to the Mini 2 is Focus Track, which is the name given to the three intelligent flight modes Spotlight, Active Track and Point of Interest. This mode not only offers the very popular capability of tracking cars, people and boats, but are also extremely useful to perform smoothly complex cinematic moves that would be very difficult to accomplish manually. The big novelty of the Mini 3 is the ability to shoot vertical video and photos, and this is a huge selling point, as it makes this model the perfect tool for users who are very active on social media platforms like Instagram, TikTok and YouTube Shorts. Other extra functionalities of the Mini 3 compared to the Mini 2 are the ability to shoot hyperlapses, which are very well implemented, master shots, and a more complete version of panorama photography. Here is a comparison of the noise level of the two models, taken from the same distance with the same microphone. The Mini 3 is incredibly quiet, and this is very useful to avoid unwanted attention. The announced horizontal speed is the same in the two models, and there is little difference in wind resistance, but the 3 certainly feels more powerful. Like other previous models of the DJI line, the Mini 2 has at times some very annoying jumps of the camera at the beginning or the end of a move while the Mini 3 is always perfectly stable, thanks to the different design of the fuselage and of the area around the gimbal. I've tested the battery life of the Mini 2 in normal flying condition at 27-28 minutes, while with the Mini I reach 30 minutes. I shoot a lot of hyperlapses and the extra life of the battery is extremely useful for this technique. With the 3 Pro it is also possible to purchase a special battery lasting well over 40 minutes. A hyperlapser dream. But sadly it's not available here in old Europe. The Mini 3 can be purchased with a new RC controller with a built-in screen. I got used to it and it is a joy to use it. No other device like a smartphone or tablet is needed. No cables to attach. Just switch it on and in a few seconds we are ready to go. 
The Mini 2 has a tiny sensor of uh, 0.43, way too small for today's standards, and this is not a good omen for dynamic range and low light footage. It has a fixed aperture of f2.8, a field of view equivalent to 24mm, and a video resolution of 4K at a frequency of up to 30 frames per second. There is only one color mode, normal. The Mini 3 Pro has a much bigger sensor of 0.77 inches, an extremely wide fixed aperture of f1.7, a field of view of 24mm, and a video resolution of 4K with a frequency of up to 60 frames per second, which is useful for slow motion. Besides normal, there is also a flat color profile, this in a like, more suitable for serious post processing. Let's have a quick look at some face to face footage shot in normal mode. Let me know in the comment your opinion and the one you prefer. Let's have a quick look at some face to face footage shot in normal mode. Let me know in the comment your opinions and the one you prefer. I've done a specific footage comparison about the two models, I will put a link at the end of this video and in the comments below. When it was released I was pleasantly surprised by the video quality of the Mini 2. But with this tiny sensor it falls completely apart against the sun and in low light situations. Frankly, night footage with the Mini 2 is a bit embarrassing for today's standards. The Mini 3 has a second color profile, a flatter one, this in a like. A flatter profile should perform better in high dynamic range situations and should be able to stand much heavier post processing. It is therefore especially useful to adapt footage to the color scheme and the mood of, of a specific project. I always thought that the Mini 2 was better for footage than for photos. We still images the tiny sensor and lens just don't get the mastered. The images are a bit noisy for today's standards. The ungraded raw file have a noticeable amount of haze. The colors are nothing to write home about and the files don't respond very well to color grading. In shot in the direction of the sun, better results are obtained by merging two HDR bracketed photos. In low light, the quality falls off a cliff. Photos with the Mini 3 are good in all light conditions. The raw files are very solid, the quality of the lens is much higher, and the colors are good but they lean slightly towards the warmish tobacco tint. I found that I get the best result lowering the white balance value to 5000 kelvins instead of the usual 5600. The Mini 3 shines particularly in low light thanks to the bigger sensor on the extremely wide aperture of the lens. There is a slight lack of detail in elements far away, probably due to the wide lens. The Mini 3 Pro has also a mode named 48 megapixel. It has a tiny bit of extra detail over the normal mode in easy light condition. It is obtained by splitting each of the 12 million pixels into four smaller ones and should not be confused for a real 48 megapixel resolution. Both models are lightweight drones below the critical threshold of 250 grams therefore under more relaxed regulations in many countries and also very easy to pack. But this is where the similarities end. The Mini 2 remains in DJI catalog as the model for beginners who want to wet their feet in drone videography and photography. It is extremely basic in functionality, offers decent video quality, basic photography and the usual excellent DJI reliability. It doesn't have any serious competition and it is the one I suggest for beginners on a tight budget. Although it's a bit of the dated technology and the sensor is frankly too small. I would not be surprised if DJI came out with a more up-to-date model very soon. The Mini 3 offers a huge amount of functionalities for such a small size. It does a lot of things and does them well. It is a gigantic improvement over the Mini 2 
and I certainly recommend it for beginners if the price is not too much of an issue. With the ability to shoot vertical video and a good ready-to-use mode, the Mini 3 is certainly the tool of choice for videographers who are active on social media platforms. It is also interesting for professionals who already own a Mavic 3 as a second road to use in urban environments, for short trips, or for hiking and social media content.